Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started again. Good evening and welcome to the open house webinar for the 2022 update to the City of Lacey's Stormwater Design Manual. Doug, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, my name is Ryan Andrews. I'm planning manager with our Community and Economic Development Department, and I'll be your host and moderator for this. Uh, and we do have with us uh, Doug Christensen, our Water Resources Engineer in the Public Works Department that is going to give the lion's share of the presentation here tonight. Uh, the way this will work is that um, we have um, all participants able to ask questions through the Q&A function of the webinar. So along the way, if you do have any questions, uh, put those in the Q&A and we will answer those questions at the end of Doug's presentation. Um, I did also want to mention that um, this will be going to the city's uh, planning commission for a public hearing coming up on May 17th. Uh, that's a, an in-person and virtual public hearing. If you do wanna provide formal comments, that's the opportunity to be able to do that. But the purpose of tonight's meeting is more informal, be able to get more information uh, pr presented from Doug, as well as answer any questions that you might have out in the audience. Uh, one last thing before I turn it over to Doug is I just wanted to mention that the, the webinar today is being recorded and will be broadcast out on the city's YouTube page. So if you happen to leave the webinar and don't get to watch the whole thing, it will be available on um, on YouTube as soon as as soon as the webinar is done. So uh, with that, welcome again and turn it over to Doug. Doug, take it away. Thank you, Ryan. And uh, thank you to those of you in attendance. We're gonna start with just a, a quick introduction here of what's going on. This is an update to the City of Lacey's 2016 Stormwater Design Manual. It'll create a 2022 edition of the manual. We're doing this for compliance with the Washington State Department of Ecology, and I'll have more on that in a moment. The updated 2022 Stormwater Design Manual, or SDM as I'll refer to it, goes into effect this summer for new project applications in the city of Lacey. And this update is uh, being conducted. I'm the project manager, so it's Public Works, Water Resources, and I had consultant assistance from Herrera Environmental Consultants and Associated Earth Sciences, Inc. A quick outline of what I'm gonna be talking about here. We'll start with the regulatory basis for this update, why we're doing it, what we have to conform to. And then we'll talk about Lacey's stormwater design manual itself, kind of an overview of, of the manual, the objectives and the applicability, some of the key components, and then what's new for 2022. And at the end, we'll have time for some question and answer. I have about two dozen slides, so we'll, we'll try not to take all night on this. The main regulatory driver is the Western Washington NPDES phase two municipal stormwater permit. This is a general permit, which means it's not specific to Lacey. It's a, it's a permit that applies basically the same for all the permittees. It regulates discharges from municipal storm drainage systems, and it's issued and administered by the State Department of Ecology. This permit applies to 82 cities and five counties in western Washington, plus there are secondary uh, permittees as well. The phase two permit was first issued back in 2007, and then they've been reissuing and updating it every five to six years or so. The current permit went into effect in July of 2019 and will be in effect until July of 2024, and each time the permit is reissued, there are increasing requirements for the city to meet for compliance. So this permit imposes a lot of requirements on us. And the, per, the reason we're doing this update is this one particular section, S5C6, which is all about controlling runoff from new development, redevelopment, and construction sites. 
And the permit requires us to, first of all, implement and enforce a local program to reduce pollutants in stormwater runoff, uh, both pro private and public. We have to include the minimum requirements, thresholds, definitions, and other criteria that are stated in the permit. And we need to be as protective of receiving waters and provide equal levels of pollutant control as Ecology Stormwater Management Manual for Western Washington. So that's what we call the equivalency with that manual. The, uh, the, the permit and the manual were both reissued in 2019. And so that's our target for compliance. Uh, these two set the baseline for all the requirements that are in our ma local manual for local use. So the deadline to have our updated manual in effect and in compliance with Ecology's requirements is June 30th. So coming up in less than two months. So Lacey's Stormwater Design Manuals is a technical guidance manual. It's used mainly by engineers who are designing drainage systems for new development and redevelopment projects. Our updated manual is going to retain the formatting and most of the content that we've had since 2016, but it'll incorporate the required uh, thresholds and criteria and definitions and so forth that I was just talking about that are in the Western Washington manual and permit. So the new 2022 SDM is gonna be very similar to the 2016 one so that current users will, will be familiar with it pretty much right out of the gate. It does have updated content throughout it uh, and some of the figures have been updated, plus a lot of clarifications and enhancements. The regulatory updates are relatively minor compared to what we had for the 2016 manual. So I've got kind of a little evolution of the SDN. This will be the third version of it. The first one was in 2010. It was a new manual at that time based on Ecology's 2005 manual. And I basically, took what they had and put it into a, a chapter format and renamed the what they called minimum requirements. I, I renamed them as core requirements because I thought it was more, more appropriate for what they really are. Because there's, <laughs> there's, there's requirements within their minimum requirements. So I thought, well, they're not really the minimums in. Anyway, that first manual was about 640 pages. In 2016, we had what I'm calling a major update because the main thing there was the incorporation of low impact development as a required component of the manual. So that was a pretty big update. Uh, and the manual grew to 860 pages. Now for 2022, we're doing what I'm calling a minor update, although there are, there are required changes throughout the manual um, and a lot of clarifications and enhancement, but regulatorily it's not a big hit um it's the, the the effect on most projects will be minimal in lacy but our 2022 update is based on ecology's 2019 as i said we've still got nine core requirements we've expanded to 10 chapters and it's i've managed to keep it under a thousand pages but it's getting pretty big at 970. So the purpose or objective of the stormwater design manual is to provide guidance and requirements to control stormwater runoff from development, basically, uh, such that they comply with water quality standards to protect receiving waters. The goals are to reduce flooding and erosion, reduce the pollutant load and runoff water, and then to recycle that clean runoff water to replenish surface waters and groundwater. The 2022 SDM will apply to all types of land development in the city of Lacey, including residential, commercial, industrial, and road projects. It's for new development, redevelopment, and construction sites. And it applies to both private and public projects. 
so far as applicability to specific projects, we follow Ecology's project size thresholds to determine which core requirements will apply to any given project. And I'll have more on that in a moment. But the requirement in the permit is that our updated manual will apply to all permit applications submitted on or after the 1st of July this year, or applications that were submitted prior to January 1st of 2017 that have not yet started construction by January 1st, or permit applications submitted prior to July 1st that have not started construction by five years from now. So in Western Washington, our, our current stormwater management strategy is uh, outlined here. First of all, low impact development or LID is considered, is promoted by ecology to be the preferred and commonly used approach to land development. The idea being to minimize impervious surfaces, conserve and utilize natural features, soil and vegetation, retain native vegetation as much as you can on your site, and then integrate small distributed stormwater practices into the site design. We retain runoff water on the site where, it, where the rain falls as much as we can, keep it dispersed rather than concentrating it, and then infiltrate the stormwater into the soil to mimic the natural hydrology of the project site. And then we implement best management practices or BMPs to control the flows, prevent pollution of water, prevent erosion from occurring, and to replenish surface water and groundwater. So there are three key components to the stormwater design manual. First are the core requirements for stormwater management. These are the nine main elements that projects will need to address. The second are best management practices, PMPs. <clears throat> These are both actions that you do and features that you construct to prevent and reduce adverse impacts. And then the third part for, for our local manual is we have stormwater submittals. Um, and we have spe lacy specific information on drainage plans and details and documentation for project permit approval. So we'll run through each of these real quickly. The nine core requirements are equivalent to Ecology's minimum requirements in their manual. They're the same. Um, so these are the nine. Anybody who's done work in Western Washington is familiar with these. There are generally, there's five main types of BMPs that are described in the manual. There's BMPs for construction sites. This is things like silt fencing and stabilized construction accesses and, and other things to control erosion and prevent sedimentation and, and track out of sediments and those sorts of things from occurring. Secondly, there's low impact development or LID BMPs. These include bioretention systems or rain gardens, bioretention being an engineered version of a rain garden, uh, permeable pavements, which let the rainwater soak right through the pavement itself, green roofs, uh, and, and other practices that are considered LID. Third is runoff treatment BMPs. Uh, these are things like wet ponds, which we don't build very many of anymore. Uh, because they take up a lot of space. There's better approaches now. Sand filters, manufactured treatment systems, and so forth that provide treatment to runoff. Forest flow control BMPs, this is generally infiltration systems because we want to infiltrate on the site as much as we can. So infiltration trenches, galleries, which are like arrays of, of trenches, and basins, which... Uh, which used to be called dry ponds, but they're not really ponds because they don't hold water. They let water infiltrate, so infiltration basins. And then there are other approaches uh, generally used when infiltration is not feasible or doesn't 
is, is not efficient on the site, and that would be dispersion or detention, those types of approaches. And the fifth one is source control BMPs. This is source control in this setting is referring to preventing pollution of rainwater at the source. In other words, where it falls, we don't want it to pick up pollutants. So there are steps that we take to, to control that pollution at the source. So stormwater submittals, um, there are three main types of submittals uh, for project approval in the city of Lacey. Most projects, all big projects, uh, do what's called a, a drainage control plan. Uh, this is projects that generally are creating or replacing more than 5,000 square feet of hard surfaces, roofs and pavement and so forth. These projects are subject to all of the core requirements. Projects that are a little smaller, under that 5,000 square foot threshold, 2,000 to 5,000, uh, are only subject to core requirements one through five, and they do what's called an abbreviated drainage control plan. And then for real small projects, we have a what's called a SWIP short form. All projects are subject to core requirement two, which is controlling runoff during the construction phase of a project. And we do what's called a SWIP, which is a stormwater pollution prevention plan. So for real small projects, they're gonna be subject to core requirement two, but rather than doing a, a full-blown SWIP like a larger project does, we have a, a short form. It's, it's as much educational as anything, just so that the, the small project, you know, somebody adding a, a, a carport, say, on their driveway, a small project like that, they'd be aware of uh, the fact that we want to control runoff during that construction phase. So, so far as the 2022 updates, ecology, excuse me, ecology had uh, issued nine of what they call significant changes. <clears throat> so these following updates were included in our 2022 SDM because it was required for functional equivalency with Appendix 1 of the Municipal Stormwater Permit. Um, so I'll run through these real quick. These are, these are the minimum things we had to do to update our manual and be in compliance. So first of all, continuous simulation modeling. This refers to the mathematical modeling software that's used to predict rates and volumes of stormwater runoff and, and for sizing of the BMPs. Uh, so these, the model used has to meet specific criteria that ecology specifies, including direct modeling of LID features and the 50 minute time steps. So the WWHM, which is the Western Washington Hydrology Model, is the standard commonly used software, but any other model that meets ecology's criteria can be used if they approve it. The second one is the replaced hard surfaces redevelopment threshold. So commercial redevelopment projects will be required to upgrade the existing site stormwater facilities if the value of the proposed improvements compared to the value of the project site exceeds a 50% value threshold. So that, that second one there only applies to redevelopment sites of a certain size, redevelopment projects, I should say. Third, equivalent areas. This, is, this allows a redevelopment project the flexibility to provide stormwater BMPs uh, on an equivalent area of their site or an offsite area if certain specific guidance criteria is met. So the idea there is that it would provide some flexibility on certain development projects. The fourth one there is core requirement two, construction stormwater pollution prevention. There are 13 elements um, that carry over from the 2016 SDM. But those have been 
updated uh, for consistency with Ecology's construction stormwater general permit. So they updated the construction permit, and so they've updated these 13 elements to correspond so that they so that they basically match. And so we've updated those in our manual as well. Under core requirement five, which is on-site stormwater management, Ecology clarified that what they call BMP number T5.13, <laughs> which is post-construction soil quality and depth, um, that that BMP is required on any project when using the LID performance standard for project subjects to core requirements one through five. This was already a part of our 2016 SDM. So it's really not a new impact. It was just that it was made a little bit clearer, um, but actually it was, it's, it's not new. Under core requirement seven, flow control, ecology clarified that all conditions for exemption have to be met before a project can direct discharge to a flow control exempt marine water. Um, so for example, a project couldn't divert a stream or, or the design of any conveyances that were going to discharge to a marine water would have to use continuous simulation modeling. And, and there are a few other criteria like that. This one won't be much of an impact in Lacey since we have very little marine shoreline, but it could potentially come into play. Construction concrete washout. Uh, this was updated to clarify the requirements for washing out concrete tools and equipment on a construction site, um, that they allow the washout into areas that are formed and waiting for concrete pour. So it's, it's uh, something that would help contractors. Uh, core requirement number three, which is source control BMPs, uh, these are the ones that prevent contamination of runoff at the source on, on finished sites that have already been developed. So Ecology added more source control BMPs for additional activities that they, they did not have in their previous manual. So there's a, a list of them that are added to the list they already had of, of potential source control BMPs that apply kind of on a case by case basis, depending on what your land use is at the site. And the last of these significant changes affects core requirement number eight, which is wetlands protection. So this section of the SDM was updated uh, along with Ecology's manual requirements and their wetland protection guidelines, which were also updated um, to basically require monitoring and modeling of, of high value wetlands. And they also refined the modeling requirements for lower value wetlands. Um, these are subject to having access to those wetlands if they're not on your site. But, um, so those are Ecology's significant changes. Now, the, the current 2016 SDM has been, we've been implementing that for more than five years now. And during this time, I've been keeping track of things that need clarification or correction. And so while updating the SDM to meet ecology's requirements, we're also taking advantage of the opportunity to, opportunity to address minor clarifications and corrections throughout the manual and also some user enhancements to try to make things clearer and, and easier to follow. Um, so throughout, like I said, throughout the, uh, the SDM, there are clarifications, there's you know, any little typos corrected, of course, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's some updated information and references that have that have changed since 2016 manual went into effect. In a few places, reformatting for clarity, which means taking paragraphs of text and then putting it instead into like bullets or lists or tables to, to just to try to make things clear and not be hidden in a whole bunch of text. And then additional enhancements. Um, for drainage control plans, we have made that into an outline form and are creating a template for it. There's additional guidance for construction sites. Um, for example, uh, on construction sites, we allow 
manufactured items that are considered by ecology to be equivalent to the standard BMPs. So like on a construction entrance, the, the standard BMP is, is to use, you know, big rock, big chunks of rock as a, as a construction entrance so that uh, it's actually when you leave the site the, to get the sediment from sticking to your tires and tracking it out of the site. Well, there are some manufactured items that, that are considered to be comparable. And so in our, in our 22 manual, we'll allow those as long as they're on ecologies list of items that they've checked out and given their approval to. Um, in, in the 22 manual, we also have guidance on UIC wells for deep infiltration. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, the source control BMPs checklist, which is uh, refined. And so the, it, it's got things that are more commonly used in Lacey and the ones that aren't commonly used are, are are, they're still available, but they're not in the forefront. So things like dock washing that don't apply in much in Lacey um, are pushed to the background. And then we have fuel station design criteria, which we've been implementing, but haven't really had all in one place before. So that's in there now. And then a new chapter 10 for BMP maintenance. So I'm going to run through, these are the chapters in the 2022 stormwater manual. They're basically the same as in the 2016 manual. So if you're familiar with our 2016 SDM, you'll probably be able to recognize that the chapters are the same, except for a few minor things. Um, one being chapter four, which was BMP selection. It was a very small chapter. And so we've added the LID site design that used to be in chapter seven and move that into chapter four. So it's a little more prominent now. Um, and then we added chapter 10, which is stormwater BMP maintenance. So the ones that are highlighted, I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on those. Are, that's where some of the bigger changes were. So I'd like to run through those real quick here. So chapter three, stormwater submittals. Um, this is where we have the drainage control plan report and the abbreviated drainage control plan reports are described. Um, the contents have been clarified and outlined. And then we're also creating a, a template to go with that. And then we took the, the BMP maintenance information out of the appendix to this chapter and moved it to chapter 10. In chapter four, as I just mentioned, we had, it was just BMP selection, but it was an awfully short chapter. And I think most people probably skipped over it. So we wanted to make it a little more prominent with the LID site design, uh, which, which are, um, you know, ecology is expecting the municipalities to, to be sure that LID is the preferred and commonly used approach to site development. So that's being pushed a little harder now. Um, so we've brought the, the LID site design information that we had buried in chapter seven of the 2016 manual and moved it up into chapter four. So it's a little more a part of the procedure that a, a site should be following during their BMP selection and their design of the site. So that's the idea with that update. Chapter seven is flow control, as it, as it was in 2016. So we have added Appendix 7C, which is the UIC guidelines. UIC is underground injection control. Um, that's ecology's program that protects groundwater by regulating the discharge of fluids from UIC injection wells. Um, and so we've included ecology's UIC guidance in this Appendix 7C of a 2022 SDM. So common shallow stormwater infiltration systems like trenches and galleries are technically considered UIC wells. But an issue we've had here in Lacey has been the use of deep UIC wells as they're called for stormwater disposal. So these deep injection wells have been implemented on several project sites, especially up in Hawks Prairie where there's shallow subsurface glacial till that precludes normal infiltration. So those sites have trouble meeting the stormwater manual because they 
can't really infiltrate the stormwater they have and there's no regional system to tie into. So on, on three of these projects, they've used borings through the till to create stormwater injection wells to infiltrate into the upper aquifer that's below the till. So the main concerns with using these deep UIC wells for stormwater are that first of all, they're not a Western Washington standard BMP. Secondly, there's no standard guidance on their design, construction, or maintenance. And third, injecting stormwater at depth below the protective glacial till layer potentially endangers underground sources of drinking water. And the city of Lacey gets, we get all of our drinking water from, from underground sources uh, with, with um, wells that are scattered pretty much all over town. So we, want to, we need to protect those drinking water resources. So due to these issues and with the local experience we've had, we've, we meaning Lacey staff, uh, have amended Ecology's guidance on deep UIC wells with some Lacey specific criteria. The idea being to help ensure that future, any future proposed deep UIC wells are thoroughly analyzed, properly designed and constructed for long-term viability and aquifer protection. So the intent here is to provide a potential path forward for projects that are on till soils and under, otherwise unable to conform with the, with the stormwater manual. Uh, and, you know, so they potentially have a path forward to approval, but at the same time, ensuring that the subsurface analysis and the UIC well design and construction are adequately protecting Lacey's drinking water sources. And then chapter 10, as I mentioned, this is a, this is a new chapter, but it's mostly existing information, <clears throat> a little bit updated, but not a whole lot on the stormwater standards. Uh, this was previously in the back of chapter three of our 2016 manual, but BMP maintenance isn't just for, for submittals. It, it's maintenance goes on into the future long after the project's finished. So it's been moved to a standalone chapter, so it's, it's uh, a little more accessible. And that's a quick overview of our 2022 stormwater design manual. And with that, if anyone has any questions. Yeah, so thanks, Doug, for your presentation. I think everything was was quite clear. Um, very informative. What I would suggest is if any of the participants have uh, questions for Doug about the manual um, or the update that's occurring in the manual, um, please type that into the Q&A function of the webinar and um, we'll pass that along to Doug and he can answer it. Uh, I'll give folks a couple minutes here to formulate any questions they might have. Uh, in the meantime, Doug, I did have one question that just kind of came up through the presentation, one that I wasn't totally familiar with, but and maybe I'm hoping that you can provide a little bit more clarity. The updated ecology regulation on requiring uh, property owners or applicants to um, basically upgrade their stormwater systems if and when they do a remodel project above 50% of the value of their existing system. Can you can you give me a little bit better idea of how that 50% is calculated? Um, do you know? And I guess my question is, if somebody was to do, let's say, a, a building remodel and their building remodel was 50% higher than the existing value of the existing building, does that then trigger us an upgrade to the stormwater system, maybe even if they weren't doing anything outdoors um, in the parking lot or in the, the storm around the stormwater system, or does it just apply to the area in the vicinity of the stormwater system? How does that, how does that work? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm not sure I can answer it adequately because <laughs> it's, it's new to us. Um, but Ecology, ecology's wording, what they say is that the minimum requirement thresholds for non-road related commercial or industrial redevelopment projects have been updated to require the project proponent to compare the value of the proposed improvements 
to the value of the project site improvements. The project site meaning the limits of disturbance on this project, um, rather than the entire parcels improvements, which is how it was worded previously. So they've it's a it's a tweak to what they had previously, and I don't know that it would come up very often, but if it does, then we'll have to kind of just be sure we understand exactly what that is saying and, gotcha. and adjust accordingly. And, and most of our kind of triggers to up, upgrade stormwater systems are more triggered at the, the site disturbance level, right? The amount of site disturbance rather than kind of the, the amount or the value of any kind of remodel, is that correct? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a dollar value judgment now. Right. So I don't see any other questions and I, I don't have any other questions through the Q and A. Anything else, Doug, that you want to add? Yes. I'm going to scroll back all the way to here. I just wanted to say that the, the, draft chapters of the manual. It's about a 30 megabyte, you know, 970 page manual. So that it's in individual chapters that are posted on the city's website. Um, I've had several calls <laughs> from people who said they can't find it. And that the problem is that our city website was updated uh, last month. So the 2022 manual had been posted since the end of January. And then in earlier mid-April, when our website was updated, um, the, the old website went away and, and some of the documents such as this manual were no, were no longer there or they were hard to find. Um, but it, it, it is posted now on the new site. And if anybody sends me an email, I could send you a link if you want to look at the draft chapters. It's If you do a search, you, you may not be able to find it, but uh, I, could, I could walk you through how to find it on our website or just send me an email at the, that, the email under my name there at the bottom. And uh, I'd be happy to point anybody to it who wants to look at the actual chapters. Great. So as far as next steps, as I mentioned at the, the onset, the next step in this process is that it will go to a public hearing in front of the city's planning commission, which is scheduled for uh, Tuesday, May 17th at 6 o'clock p.m. If you registered for this webinar, uh, we will give you or we'll send you via email a uh, notice of that hearing. So if you do want to provide formal comment uh, on the changes to the stormwater design manual, that's the way to be able to do that um, to our planning commission. Uh, once it's gone through the planning commission process, the planning commission will make a recommendation on the plan. Uh, that then goes to the city council for consideration. And uh, as Doug mentioned in his presentation, we're anticipating that that will be formally considered by, by the city council in, in sometime in June, um, prior to that, that June 30th deadline that we have with the Department of Ecology to get this completed. So with that, Doug, thank you so much for your presentation tonight. It was really informative. I think a lot of good information and I think it really gave people a good idea of what's in the new update to the stormwater design manual. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to either one of us. Um, otherwise, have a great evening and thank you for attending the webinar. Thank good you. Night.